Hello, fellow passionate knitters. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, if you stick around until the end, I'm going to share a tip on how to cast on in the round without getting your stitches all twisted. Um, again, I wanna thank you for joining me. I am Jessie Pellet, also known as That Minnesota Yarn Girl. And this is episode one of my podcast. If you like what you see here today, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment on the link below. Also, um, you can follow me on Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook, all as That MN Yarn Girl. Since this is my first episode, I thought I should share a little bit about myself. So, as you might have guessed, I live in Minnesota and I, specifically in Savage, Minnesota, which is a suburb of the Twin Cities. Um, I live with my husband, Mike, my 12-year-old son, Thayden, and our two little kitties, Zuli and Mia. Um, so as far as knitting goes, I started to knit when I was about 12. I had picked up a kit um, from Joanne Fabrics. It was just like a kids teach yourself how to knit um, kit. That rhymes. Um, and so I, learned but only the knit stitch i did not they did not teach you the purl stitch and they did not teach you any pattern instructions or anything like that so i literally knit like a barbie blanket and i think that was it and then i put it down for a few years um then i was in college and i decided i was going to pick it back up again but when i looked at a pattern i was like oh my god what's the purl stitch i never learned that and there was no YouTube at the time, so I couldn't just like look it up and see how to do it. Well, I suppose I could have looked up directions, but I, there was no video tutorials anyways. Um, so I knit a half of a scarf in garter stitch and then just kind of it fizzled and I gave up for a while. Uh, but then to fast forward to 2014, and when it, it was um, Thanksgiving weekend and my son was at his dad's for the weekend. So I just had this long weekend and I was like, okay, I am going to do this. I'm going to learn it. So I sat down in front of YouTube. Now there was YouTube and got some yarn and I figured it all out and have just been hooked ever since. And I've been become so passionate about this art. Um, and so my goal for this um, podcast is to share my passion and to hopefully inspire you. And not only that, but I want to know about your passion for this art. And I want to know, I want to be inspired by you. So I'm going to be breaking this podcast down into segments. And what kind of a knitting podcast would it be if we didn't have finished objects and whips? Whips being works in progress. Um, so my first segment, I'm going to talk about, uh, about what I've been working on lately. And to start with, I have this <laughs> lovely bright pair of socks here, or a sock, I guess. Um, oh, that's upside down because the cuff is up here. And I have not done a ton of socks. This is actually only my second pair of socks that I've done. So um, I... I'm kind of just experimenting. This is just a vanilla sock. Um, I'm experimenting. Do I like cuff down or toe up? So the first pair I did was for my husband and I did a toe up pair. This one is cuff down. And I haven't decided yet what kind of toe or heel I'm gonna do. I am gonna do an afterthought heel, but I haven't decided the exact type yet. I was gonna do a little bit more research when I get to that point. Um, like I said, this is for my son, Thayden, and he loves bright colors, as you can maybe have guessed. Hot pink is like his favorite color, so go him for having the confidence to rock it. Um, and yeah, so I, he is at scout camp this week. He left last Saturday. He'll be home on Saturday. And I was hoping to have this finished by the time he gets home, but, or well, have a whole pair finished. I'm not gonna have the whole pair finished. But I will at least hopefully have this sock finished so he can, you know, try it on and tell me if he likes it and then I can knit the other sock. So, and this yarn is, um, I was kind of just on Etsy trying to find uh, um, like other Minnesota artists. And so I purchased this yarn um, from two different 
from two diff two different indie dyers in Minnesota. So this one is um, from Dippin' Dot or Dippin' Dons. It's Dippin' Dons, and it's Sunkissed Orange, I think, was the name of it. Um, and it's on her sock weight uh, superwash merino nylon blend. And then this one, the pink one, is from Abacus Dye Works. And this is also a sock yarn and superwash merino nylon. They're like slightly, they're both sock yarns, but they're slightly different. Like you can kind of see it here. The They're slightly different weights, but I just decided to go with it anyways because, um, I just, the colors fit and hopefully it'll all still kind of work out. So my next work in progress is a sweater. I was looking for, not a sweater, a t-shirt. I was looking for a t-shirt because I wanted, I haven't done a garment for a while and I wanted to do a garment, but you know, it is the middle of summertime and so it's too hot to wear a sweater. Um, and I knew that once I got it off the needles, I was going to want to wear it right away. So I went into On Ravelry and I love the ability to search On Ravelry because I just, I wanted a t-shirt and I wanted some lace. And so what I found was this lovely pattern by um, Megan Fernandez and it's on the cover of Pom Pom in 2014. So I loved it so much I, I um, ordered or I downloaded the entire magazine. Um, you can see there's a little bit better, the nice um, lace work that's in there. And I loved this pattern. So I am knitting it. Um, and I'm using the same yarn that she used, but I have a different color. My color is Old Smoke. And this is, um, this is Kettle Yarn Co. Islington DK and like I said my color is Old Smoke and you can see um, this progress marker is where I was at the beginning of the week and that was when they had left for scout camp so I've had a lot of knitting time this week um, and also it's just it's a nice simple garter stitch so it goes like really really fast and that's why um, that's why I've been able to to get so much done and also why I haven't really done a ton of this on his socks because I this again is just a nice simple pattern so it replaced my sock simple pattern um so that those are the two items that I have been working on um and the finished object I haven't gotten a ton of stuff finished for a while I think you know in part because it's summertime um but so the the one thing that I have finished, which I actually finished in July, but since this is my first episode, you guys would not have seen it yet. This is um, Time Trades, and the pattern is by Caitlin Hunter. And it's kind of this long, it like fades, and it's got a little bit of like lace work here. Um, I just love this pattern. It was I just, it's gorgeous. And like there's seven different colors here. Um, it starts out like, so y you you fade into this like main color here, or well, the two main colors really. But so the, um, the colors that I chose, I started with, or I did a, um, it's by the Sweet Georgia is who did the, this these pink yarns and it was a fade set so this one is this like the darkest one here is I think this one was orchid yep and then it goes to lip gloss and then candy floss and then um was it and then uh, azalea and guava so those that is those colors and then these um this color is, these two, I, again, I was on Etsy looking for indie dyers that were based near my hometown or near me, um, and I found Darn Yarn Minnesota, and or Darn Yarn MN, and I fell in love with these colors. So then this color here is um, Raspberry Sherbet, and this one is Rose Gold. And I love how this Raspberry Sherbet like has like all these pinks in it. Like it's a it's kind of a purpley base, but it has all of these like 
speckles of these, like I feel like they're just, it's such a perfect match. It goes so well. Um, and I just love how it like fades into it. And, and I was glad that it wasn't just pink because I feel like if it had been, it might have been too much pink. And then this rose gold again is um, just a little bit nice. It's got that tint of pink, but it's a slightly different color. So it just, I just love how it turned out. I love, 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 love this one. Um, and again, that, those two last two colors were from Darn Yarn. And I have lots of little mini skeins left and I can't wait to like figure out something to do, maybe just like a little hat or something. I'm excited for that. Um, so that is what I've been working on. Those are my whips and um, finish objects. All right, so the next segment is the Improve Along. Guys, I am super excited about this. The Improve Along is my idea for a knit along, but with an emphasis on improving skills or stepping out of your comfort zone and maybe trying something you've never tried before. Um, so often I hear knitters that are like, oh my God, I've never done that before. And they're afraid of trying something just because they've never done it. But the thing is, is that we can always rip back, right? Just add your lifeline in, or you could practice. You can practice before too. But I mean, so many people are afraid to rip back when no one's ever gonna know whether or not you you did. And your final product can still be beautiful even if you did have to rip back. Um, and so the way that this will work is that every month I will introduce a new theme and then I will start a thread on Ravelry, um, one that's gonna be for like maybe questions, troubles, tips, you know, things just like kind of general discussion about that particular theme. And then the second thread will be for the finished objects. The rule to participate will be that you have to, um, you just have to do something with, the, um, that you just have to do a, project in within that theme and it has to, and then when you post your finished object you'll just say is, is it your first time you've done it or you know maybe it what you needed improvement in this skill or if you're like but I'm an expert and I still want to participate then great we still want like you to participate we want your feedback then so then post your final object and just be like hey, and this is my advice for this. You know, give us some words of wisdom or some words of encouragement if you think there might be something that people could potentially be struggling with. Um, and so, as I mentioned, every month there will be a different theme. And this month, the theme is Latvian braids. And I forgot to mention when I was talking about my water lily um, tea, the reason I picked the Latvian braids is because like right here, she's got a Latvian braid in there and I've never done a Latvian braid and so I'm excited to learn this it's a new um, new technique for me and um, so what I did was I went on to YouTube and I found a couple great tutorials um, there my favorite one was Nitty Melissa did uh, knitting Latvian braid I just thought that was the best but there was also some really great ones by um, Webb's American yarn store they had a tutorial called Learn to Knit a Latvian Braid. And then the final one was Garn Studio Drop Design had a video called How to Knit a Latvian Braid. Um, but this one was, there was no, it, the tutorial was completely silent, so there was no audio instruction. It was all visual, and it was incontinental. So if you're a English knitter, you'll want to use one of the first two, um, but if you're continental, that last one might help. And I'm also going to drop links to those in the drop down below. Um, and then if you're just looking for a pattern idea, one uh, pattern I found on Ravelry was um, Lizzie Hat slash Chemo Hat, and it was by Debbie Fring. It was like $3.15. Um, on Ravelry and she suggested using um, Cascade Yarns, Sierra, Red Heart Soft Solids, Barocco Comfort Solids, and Heather's Crystal Palace Yarns Moki Plus. Um, and uh, and the, the pattern could be knit in two colors or just one. And the reason I 
thought that this one could be a good one was because the average difficult rating was a two over, and that was with 42 users that kind of mentioned that, or that was the average over 42 users, and I just thought that would be a good one if you are a really new beginner and you're just looking for just to learn this new technique. Um, and next week I will have another pattern suggestion that has an, that also uses the Latvian braid, but please feel free to find your own pattern. If you want to participate in this in this um, improve along, but you don't want to use any of the patterns I suggest, don't feel like you have to. I'm just suggesting it in case you have no idea where to start. Um, and like I said before, Ravelry has a great search tool, so there's tons of other you know ways to find a great pattern. If these aren't, if you don't want to use one that I suggest. Um, and then, you know, if you want to participate, just hop on over to the Ravelry group and I'll get those improve along started. And I can't wait to see all the new projects that everyone is going to be doing. Um, also, if you have any ideas or suggestions for a theme for another month, I would love to hear them. Just pop them in those comments below. Um, I just, I would love to hear if you're, you know, want to try something new but like you need new you need a little bit of extra motivation a little extra push whatever so please again just comment below or in the Ravelry group if you're looking to um or if you have an idea for the improve along all right so my next segment I'm calling Netflixing so when I was on I don't know what I was on a few uh, it was about a year or two ago, and I was like, I found this article on Netflixing, and I, and I just thought it was so funny because I always like having something on in the background when I'm knitting, and so I will just binge watch TV, especially in the wintertime, I'll just binge watch TV and like knit up a storm. And so then when I found this article all on Netflixing, and I was like, that's great because it's actually a thing. Um, <laughs> and I do it all the time. But so I just wanted to add a little segment that's maybe just about like great things to watch or great things to have on in the background while we knit. Um, so one of my absolute favorite shows to Netflix is Gilmore Girls. Um, I feel like because Gilmore Girls is just so it's like laid back and like there, it's just not like super deep content so you can just have it on in the background you and like the great thing is and you can just be entertained and listen to them and have a great time and like it doesn't matter how hard your pattern is I mean if you're learning a new technique I probably wouldn't be trying to learn a new technique while watching it but like other than that like you can have a difficult pattern and just you can watch it and it doesn't matter um so I love Gilmore Girls for Netflixing. Uh, and then a more recent one that I've been enjoying is Handmaid's Tale. Um, I read this when I was in high school and I was probably not quite mature enough to fully grasp it, but then I read it again later and realized that and I love the book and now I have loved the TV series. I feel like it stays very true to the tone and feel of the book. Um, and it's just, it's a good, it's a good show. Um, it's maybe a little bit more, it's, well, it's definitely more like intense than Gilmore Girls. Um, and your attention level maybe has to be a little bit higher. So I would say like, if you're knitting, you're probably going to want to be knitting like a pattern of a difficult level, like your midway point, like nothing beyond your, like what's your mid grade difficulty level. So like, if you're going on a scale of one to 10, like Ravelry, you probably wouldn't want to go of anything above a five for you, just because it might get a little hard to pay attention to the show and or you're knitting and you don't want to have to rip back. <laughs> um, all right, so I would love to hear what kinds of things you guys are watching while you knit, so please comment below, and I'll also start a thread in Ravelry, and just let us know what you're watching, and like, you know, what kinds of patterns work well with those TV shows. All right, and then the next segment I'm gonna call Knit Happens, and this one is, I just wanted to share like fun stuff in the news, or, um, 
in social media, things that are related to knitting, but not necessarily like 100% all about knitting. Um, and so the first one I found um, was, this was this article was actually written in March of this year, but I've seen several articles about it. And this was written by um, um, Chelsea Richel, and it was on the, the Independent um, for UK, it was their website. And the, the name of the article was Knitting Can Reduce Anxiety, Depression, Chronic Pain, and Slow Dementia, Research Reveals. And I just thought that this was great because um, anxiety and depression are something that, like, they're... I, I suffer from depression and like there's, I just, I know so many people, it's such a thing that people don't really want to talk about and it's, um, and I just feel like knitting is such a great way to like relieve that. And this article was, um, really interesting because it, well, it talked about how there was this group of people, um, knit for peace. It's like 15,000 knitters in the UK who knit for people in need. And, um, they conducted their own research on how, how knitting benefits health basically. Um, and so they, in the article talked about a study that was done in 2007 by Harvard Medical School's Mind and Body Institute and they talked about how it lo how knitting can lower your heartbeat 11 beats per minute which and then like it also enhances a state of calmness like similar to um yoga and then they talked about how, how the repetitive movements also release um serotonin which again if you going back to depression and anxiety and all that stuff that like helps that's probably why it helps with all of that um, and then they talked about a 2000 study, a 2011 study that was done by Mayo Clinic where, um, that found that knitters had a lower risk of dementia and memory loss and also helped combat loneliness. Um, so then it talked about all these studies and then it talked about how the knitter, knit for peace, um, community conducted their own survey and found that 70% of their participants said that it improved their health, you know, particularly making them feel more relaxed. And 21% um, said it helped relieve their pain from arthritis. So, um, and then the article concludes that there, you know, billions of dollars are spent on healthcare and and it's just, um, well, billions of pounds because it was in the UK. But, and it's just interesting how, you know, knitting could potentially combat some of those issues. So next time you're at the yarn store and you're like, ooh, this is kind of a high bill for all this yarn. Just remember, you're just kind of, it's good for your health and you're helping combat some of those future medical bills. Anyways, I just thought that was a fun article and wanted to share that with you so you can justify your yarn and knitting habits to other people. And if you see any other newsworthy, knitworthy, knit happens um, ideas, I would love to hear about them in the comments below or on the Ravelry group. Please let me know and I will share them in future podcasts. Um, moving on to the final segment, tips, tricks, and hacks. Guys, I was so excited to learn this trick. Um, I was taking a craftsy class on how to create your own cowl um, by Laura Nelkin. And this is when, that's when I learned this trick. And like, it is, um, it was, seriously, it was funny because when I was casting on for my water lily sweater, it's like 274 stitches. And it kept, I kept like, it kept getting twisted. And I, I don't know how, because I kept trying to make sure it wasn't getting twisted. And then I'd get to row two and be like, what happened? And then a week later, I saw this video and learned this tip. And I was like, oh my God, this would have been so helpful to know beforehand. So what you are going to do to, for this trick is you will thread some scrap yarn through your cast on pieces. So like when you first cast on, you'll thread it through your first stitch. And then depending on how many stitches you are going to cast on, um, I typically use markers 
to help me count how many stitches I've cast on. But now with this new method, you you can you don't need count um, markers. So like, let's say if I was going to cast, I was going to be counting every 20 stitches, then I would just thread my scrap yarn through every 20th stitch just like this and let me show you how it goes you're gonna take your scrap yarn make sure it's on your needle and then you'll insert it one through the right side coming out the left side and then you'll pull it back and I like to hold it like back here like in front of my piece because when I held it in back then it um, then my thread got all off. So you'll hold it in back of there and then you'll continue to cast on for your next, you know, how many ever stitches you're going to cast on. And then at the end, um, and you'll do that, you'll repeat that process until you have all your numbers cast on. And then at the end, you will have these, all these little pieces of your scrap yarn will be hanging down or towards the center of your round piece and then you'll and then you join in so the, you know that now they're not twisted because they're all hanging towards the center so then if you if they weren't towards the center see then let's just show an example like now it's on the outside and now you know that they're all twisted so and I just kept it on like that until um I was at row two and then that really, then I just knew for peace of mind that it wasn't twisted and it worked really well. So that is a nice little handy trick for casting out in the round. Again, guys, I would love to hear it. If you have any tips, tricks, hacks, whatever that you would love to, that you would be willing to share with all of us, um, please let me know in the comments below or on Ravelry and I will happily share them in future podcasts. All right, thanks everyone for hanging out with me today. That is all I got. Um, but if you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Um, and like I said before, you can also find me on Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook, all at that MN Yarn Girl. I would love to hear from you. And thank you again so much for spending some time with me. And I will see you again, hopefully in the near future. Until then, I will leave you with a picture of cats and hats. Bye.